Well, hello, creatives, community, kind folks out there. Thanks for joining me around the table for a slice of digital pizza. Uh, today is, a, of course, yet another De Demi Daily deep dive as we get into settings with chases. Yes, Monday and Tuesday, we talked about chases in RPGs. And this week, um, this today and this entire week is no different. We're going to talk about chase scenes and RPGs. And of course, I am your host, DBJ, uh, contributing writer to Critical Hit Publishing. So let's get started. Well, today we're going to talk about, of course, settings with chases. Uh, we're going to bring up a couple, um, a couple of chase scenes that we know of in particular settings. And let's create or even develop some settings that require chases. All right. So the ones that come to the... To uh, the ones that come to talk about, uh, <laughs> that come to mind when we talk about chases uh, is Mad Max, you know. <laughs> Morning, Prue. If Foolish Kiwi, hey, what's, what are you, who are you guys talking about? I mean, how are you guys doing? Uh, we are, of course, still talking about chases. We're talking about our favorite settings and creating settings and developing settings that require a chase. You know, it's like it becomes that special thing that's part of the world. It's it's like not having dragons in your fantasy setting, which I suppose they're setting without dragons, but you, you get my point, right? So I was thinking of, of like Mad Max has is known for its chases. Uh, Star Wars is, you know, this, many sci-fi settings, especially Star Wars, are kind of known for their chases. Um, there are... Although it's not given much, not given much um, emphasis, chase scenes are actually quite common in uh, fantasy or ancient ancient um, settings. Simply by virtue of having like chariots, wagons, um, any kind of mounted uh, combat, um, Assassin's Creed is absolutely positively a a, a video game that utilizes a setting where a chase is part of it. And of course the chase doesn't necessarily need to be horizontal. It, you know, roof running and running through alleyways and things like that. Spy, spy settings, uh, whether it's uh, 007, you know, James Bond or, or um, the Bourne movies uh, definitely are chases. Oh, hell yeah. Proof says on the high seas, pirates and prey chases. Yeah, pirates, high seas. It's absolutely positively a chase. It's essentially you're you're chasing the other people or you're running away from them or towards them with your own headquarters, really. So you're kind of bringing your own you're bringing your own headquarters as well as as uh, chasing them through, whether it's storm tossed seas or uh narrow passes or something like that. Uh, biker gangs. So Foolish Kiwi says, I know a specific, but a biker gang setting would um, have a lot of chases as well or any sort of bandit type thing. Absolutely. Chasing down people. Uh, uh, really, Kitty? I gave you... Sorry, guys. I know. I love you, too. I know. Sit right here. You screwed up my, my camera. We already had this talk. Sorry. <laughs> Here, now I'll give you head scratches. Come on. There you go. There you go, Kitty. Yeah, I know. I know. You're, you're silly. Uh, so, <laughs> um, Sons of Anarchy. Jeez. And the new show, Mayans, I'm sure, has a has a ton of, of chases or chase scenes in it. <laughs> yeah. Sophie. All right. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can bring her into the fold. She, oh, she! Oh, you want a piece of my pop tart? That's what you're trying to do, you silly ass cat! I love you. All right, it's a little hard for her to actually sit on my lap in front of the computer because then she'll be sitting on all the keys and such. She doesn't know. She she doesn't know these things. Um, Foolish Kiwi says also running from the police in settings where maybe vigilantism is heavily frowned upon. Um, hell, it. it Oh, anything Shadowrun, Cyberpunk, Shadowrun, um, uh, anything related to the, the comic books, like the world of the X-Men, because the X-Men are like, you know, they're mutants and they have to be hunted down. And 
they have to be hunted down because they are they they represent a danger to to everyone around them. So uh, absolutely, uh, street level superheroes like Batman, um, Daredevil. You know, the police frown upon the they they appreciate their 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 input into the war against crime, but at the same time, vigilantism is is bad because they're you know they're beating the hell out of the bad guys and hanging them off of rooftops and breaking their bones. Uh, the Watchmen, yes, absolutely, yeah, it, the Watchmen too, and and of course, approve um. Um, concurs and also says chasing vigilantes in the same setting as well. You know, there's there's something about the chase itself that kind of breaks up the not just the monotony, but allows you to kind of express the world around what's going on. Uh, let, let me give you an example. If you have Shadowrun, cyberpunk type of world, you can include things like hover cars and running past cyber gangs and the 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 authorities who have you know shooting like um, you know they they have the 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 vertical takeoff and landing vehicles with like nets inside of them and then they have like cyborg police officers with you know the 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 sirens blasting from their backs and then on their shoulders are like and there's maybe LEDs on cyborgs with uh, blue and red lights, and they're they're broadcasting through the the PA system around the entire city, you know, to tell you to stop. And and of course, you have to have the public that is all like, you know, pink haired and and black dye across the face, and and one cyber limb, and homeless people sitting in the streets who who completely ignore everything that's going on, right? Even though you're having like this this running gun battle during the chase, everyone's just like, eh, as long as I don't die, I'm fine. You know, whatever, step over the dead bodies and keep on going. People are like very um, apathetic about everything. Yeah, um, Foolish Kiwi says, chases also allow you to remind Mr. Bulletproof full plate armor that um, that is, isn't always the best outfit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I always bring up, I always use the, 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 the idea of like the barbarian character, right? Like the one that, it's the it's the PC that can't be hurt, dishes out the most damage, and feels like, well, you know, like they've wiped their hands of the situation. Like, well, I'm done. I'm going to just dominate in this game. Uh, I can never be hurt. I can kill everything, and I'm done. But a chase allows you to really insert into your setting uh, multiple and varied win conditions. Whether it means you know chase getting away from the authorities. Um, outrunning the the rival gangs, um, needing to get from one place to another without suffering any harm, uh, whether you're in like a post-apocalyptic world. And let's take Mad Max, for example, you're in a post-apocalyptic world and you know there's, there's you know, rival gangs out there. There's like biker gangs and they're cannibals or something. And you need to get, you know, 200 miles from one place to another and getting there as, as stealthily or as fast or to beat the sandstorms or horrible electrical storms that happen is a is a win condition. And that individual that feels like they're Mr. Bulletproof, you know, just doesn't fit or or rather the spotlight is taken from them during some of these situations. Now, of course, if you're riding in cars, you know, driving super fast and you want to jump from one car to another with your battle axe, I mean, hell yeah, you you, you want them to do that. But the case, the case may be, hey, uh, you, you know, Mr. B a Barbarian, Mr. Bulletproof B, um, you're going to have to jump back in the car because we need to make a left turn and go down to that narrow valley and go into the cave system before the storm hits. Yeah, I know you can you can take out all these bandits, but you know, we need to win, quote unquote, win this situation and get the hell out of there. Foolish Kiwi says even just a petty theft, yanking a magic item off the party while they're asleep, um, then <laughs> leaping from the window to escape. Oh, oh, you you want to see a you want to see a chase that destroys a city? Have somebody steal something from the party and they will they will rip the world down to try to go after them. But yes, absolutely. Uh, chasing a pickpocket through town. Uh, I Like I mentioned before, spies, war move. Um, Spies, war movies, um, 
uh, black ops, anything that's like black ops, Navy SEAL has uh, has chase scenes in it where, you know, Jason Bourne or or any character thereof has to make their way through a city, both being and crowds and such, both being um, stealth, stealthy like as well as getting into confrontations with the authorities and your enemies. So the PCs may not, you know, want to shoot the, the police officers, but the police officers may, you know, there might be an APB out for that, you know, that looks like, and of course they have one of those funky um, hand-drawn pictures of one or more of the PCs. And then they, they want to, you know, corner them in the local mall. And then the PCs run through the mall, stealing baseball caps and putting on jackets and, and running into the back wall, back rooms and going to the, the 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 HVAC system and all those kind of things. Those are absolutely uh, sh- races as well. Proof says uh, short leg races could be um, punished too or favored depending on the chase. Yeah, the chase doesn't necessarily need to be long, right? It doesn't need to be hours. It doesn't need to be hundreds of miles. It doesn't need to s- span the world. It could be um, PCs talking to bad guy in alley. PCs need to outrun police in three rounds, right? The the, the cops turn the corner. Um, they, they see their faces. Hey, you guys right there. Maybe it's shadow run. They know that they don't need the authorities on their back because they've just, you know, met with a Mr. Johnson. Uh, Mr. Johnson sneaks off into the shadows. The PCs go running and it, it's a 20 second race, right? It's just basically um, jumping over fences, slipping down through running through a crowd, um, going through the back door of a nightclub, mixing in with the crowd there, and then stealing a car and driving away, right? It, it could be it could be very short, very short, very like, like boom, 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 like really, really quick races. But also uh, having a race and having a setting that requires races means that there's a need to get from one place to another, either being very quiet or doing it very having a lot of stealth or there's tons of timers you, pcs need to get f- from a to b very quickly pcs need to, need to get away from from adversaries very quickly and so there could be a lot of tension build up shadow run cyberpunk worlds are very much like that where uh everyone's at the bottom of the totem pole there's only rich and poor and there's only a small window of opportunity to to get a mission going to get always going on that one last run, right? It's always, it's always one more run and I can retire one more run and I can go up the gravity. Well, and that could, that could be a, that could be a point as well. Um, Proof says, um, Gimli had to suffer the indignity of getting thrown during a chase because he was short. Uh, <laughs> Proof says, so not what I meant, but good points, DBJ. Yeah. Oh, short leg up. Uh, Duh. <laughs> you mean you mean actual physical short legs? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but yeah, I I uh I, I thought I was wrong, but I was uh, mistaken. <laughs> anyway, Prue. Uh, but but now that I get your point, I get your point. But I I misinterpret it. But yeah, it still went down another rabbit hole. You know me, deep diving. So there are many chases that uh, <laughs> love you too oh man you got gotta have you on the show so at some point have you have you like part and parcel of the show it's been a been a long time i think you would have uh would make an excellent uh addition to to anyone's uh show or podcast or something like that i think you'd have you'd have a lot to uh, a lot to add a foolish Kiwi says, "I'll pick up the gnome like a football and run." <laughs> um, okay, let's let's not use the gnomes and halflings and dwarves as sports equipment, right? I, although I think maybe like a dwarf would probably be a really good like mes- medicine ball or like rugby, whereas a gnome would be like a football and a halfling like a baseball or tennis ball. Maybe half, maybe the halfling's the football and the gnome is more like a soccer ball. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're you're very welcome, Prue. Um, uh, but, but I mean it though. But it, the 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 case may be that in in our um, chases, oftentimes we kind of push aside the chases in our medieval world, but they are there. And especially if you if some 
one or more of your players really want to do like the whole mounted combat, right? The the I'm a ranger with my hunting dog or wolf or something, my bear, and I want to run through the woods chasing something down. I want to I want to hunt. I want a bounty hunt. I made a bounty hunter. I want to hunt bounties, right? It's it, I want to play a minotaur or or centaur, preferably, or something that is a plains runner. Um, um, hint, hint, hint. <laughs> you know, I, of course, I got the cinematic book, Plains and Grasslands. But but that being aside, I really created it so that there was something that people who wanted to be in a place where you going through the through wastelands or uh, just fields and such could play those characters and not feel like, OK, we've gotten now we got to the dungeon. Now I've got to leave my horse outside or, hey, I'm playing a centaur, but I can't go into the dungeon because I can't go up and down ladders and climb cliff sides and things like that. Maybe if there's a way to have chases of Western, any kind of a of Western type setting, you know, high noon, uh, six shooters going across Utah and Montana and, and Nevada and such, you know, Grand Canyon and, and dry landscapes, Arizona, that seems to be a very, um, uh, not the epitome, but it, it always seems to go well together when it comes to Westerns and riding on the horse and, you know, having a huge plains in front of you and the sun starts to set in, in the background and the colors are always like sepia and brown and, you know, grays and sand colored type, type of things. And so ha having chases of jumping onto or off of wagons and having horses ride by and jumping from one horse to another to tackle someone. And of course you have to have the the indigenous people, the Native Americans, the 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 Indian tribes. Of course, you have to have a, a good tribe, and you know we feel bad that everyone's trying to kill them. And then we have the evil tribe that's always hacking people's heads, and we don't like them at all. And I mean, it, it, we're just talking about stereotypes, right? And and having those become part of chases. Proust says, as a DM, offering a small cave opening during a chase. Maybe it's a shortcut to the goal of the chase, but only the small PCs can run through. The others have to go around. Yeah, absolutely. Having having all of those little options, those little obstacles that come across, whether it's a small cave, uh, a narrow crevice, um, leaping across a, a gorge, running through, um, he needing to wade waist deep through a raging river or something like that. You can definitely positively have all those things. Vince, what's going on? <laughs> hey, still, yeah, still work moving. Yeah, I, I hear you. I, moving sucks. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we're definitely we're we're talking about uh, as if you didn't know, but um, yeah, Waterworld is interesting for a chase setting. Waterworld, what a not the best executed movie, but a great idea. For those who don't know, Waterworld is the Kevin Costner world where literally we find out that the entire earth has been flooded and that there are very few, I think there's only like in the movie, they hint that there's only one mountain that it pokes above the waterline. And there are roving, it's like, Mad Max on the water. So there are anything and everything that can float has been scavenged and used as uh, floating machines, you know, where they're using like uh, <laughs> um, jet skis and ski doos and they're like actually literally like diving them underwater and blasting above the land. Yeah, there was, there was uh, in the water world, there was rumors that there was just one place of dry land left in the entire world. I'm assuming the Himalayas or or a handful of your highest mountain peaks that are were poking above the water poking above the water line. And so of course there's no longer, you know, they're no longer snow capped. I'm hoping that there's land for them to actually graze on and set up a society and whatnot. But essentially everything was was in the water. I, I I'm I would I would tell you that the RPG Blue Planet uh, would would tend to have a lot of chase scenes. Anything underwater, as a matter of fact, um, as was mentioned by uh, Joseph uh, Keenan in in um, in the comment section, talked about 
submarine battles, um, aircraft carrier battles, battleship battles, U-boat battles. Th those things are absolutely uh, possible in a chase scene and having a setting with chase scenes as well. The 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 submarine battle is very, very much, um, hey, 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 Fat Ninja, what's going on? Uh, thanks you for joining us. Uh, there are plenty of like quiet tension moments leading to lots of danger, leading to lots of quiet moments. So it, in effect, they're like slow, quiet chase scenes where everyone is trying to move around as quietly as possible. Um, submarine battles could, are a good parallel to like ninja spy battles, assassin battles, where everyone is trying to hide or be disguised. The, the, the submarines are trying to hide down in deep valleys and turn off all of their mechanisms so no one can hear their pings and they're sending out signals with their radar and everything. And then of course, all of a sudden, someone wants to fire their torpedoes and they need to, to lock one of their torpedoes and, and change the explosive parameters. You know, well, we don't want the torpedoes to explode too close to us, so we have to send them out. And then of course, the, the submarine captains and everyone's trying to dodge the torpedoes and hoping that they hit against the wall or something. And then the chase is on a, yet again. Um, Foolish Kiwi says, ice and snow is a great for chases because of thin ice. You stick out like a sore thumb unless wearing snow white gear, snow blindness, et cetera, trying to make it back to the cave. Um, yes, g hell, just, just trying to make it from one place to another. Um, what is... There is a, I want to call it, not terminal velocity. Oh, there's a, there's a, a Matt Damon. Uh, I'm wrong about that. I'm going to say Matt Damon, but I think that's not the actor. Maybe it's O'Connell. But in, anyway, the, the, the point being, um, plenty of movies where uh, lone people climb up in mountain, ignore the, the, the warnings about a storm, storm hits, other people go, twice as many people go up to save those individuals and most of them die doing it, right? And it's all of like the, like the snow blindness, the trudging through the deep snow, the, the, the sliding downhill and not as you're sliding down hit, hill, hitting things like trees and rocks. Or of course, in front of you is the yawning deep chasm and you have to use your spikes on your boots or your axe or something to keep yourself from, from sliding off into the chasm and falling down, you know, 200 feet to your possible death or doom. Uh, of course, there's avalanches uh, going across anything that's ice covered, climbing up, you know, frozen waterfalls or something, or like you said, thin ice in the frozen lakes. And I mean, great places to have chases. And of course, many of those are tension chases so probably mixed there's a ton of mixing being quiet and being patient versus getting to someplace very quickly right um uh, Prue says you don't even need anyone chasing you the harsh weather might be chasing you for your life hell yes when 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 those storms those those you gotta have air quotes freak storms show up and the PCs you know you're telling the PCs listen the po point blank you won't survive you're Hey, you druid, you ranger, you barbarian, you already know. I don't care how, how tough you character thinks you are. You will be frozen frozen and trapped in the valley if you don't make a run for it. And you've got, uh, let's look at our watches in our medieval world, three hours to make it from, you know, one mountain peak to the other side of the mountain peak or something, or make it from one you know, hidden enclave to the one place of that you only know of in safety. And again, we can you can throw in the the small caves to try to get a reprieve, the the overhangs that can cut down on the wind. But it's a great way to, especially the weather is a great way to uh, escalate the dangers. So the, that that idea of escalation where you know, okay, you're making your DC 10 con checks, you know, in the beginning and uh, minute by minute, it starts going up one point by one point, the damage starts to increase the, the dangers of getting frostbite in your fingers and toes and all that kind of stuff, just increasing the, 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 um, the danger involved and the, the harm that befalls those that fail really, really can 
feed into your hard-headed PCs if they're not listening to you that, yeah, you don't want to stay out here. You're probably going to die. Yeah, try to make a DC 37 check in, in 5th edition Dungeons and & Dragons and see if you make it. You're probably not going to going to make it. And up here, here's your fourth level exhaustion. You don't want another one. You know what I mean? It's those kind of things that you can that ramp up the uh, the intensity. A Foolish Kiwi says one polar bear plus one blizzard plus thin ice and cliffs equals a rough week. Uh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. And really, one of the things that I love about um, chases and the environment, got to hit the environment as well, and especially in chase scenes, is we we tend to think that when we have our monster books that that's all we have. We have a monster book and they're all boring and I'm done. But for every environment that you have, you can multiply the creatures in it by that many environments. Hey, you want five environments? Uh, deserts, swamps, forests, um, Arctic wastelands, and um, co coastal areas. Boom. You've just multiplied all of the creatures in your book by five, right? You can have them adapt it to that world. A polar bear is, it is a scary creature, but compared to like... The PCs, your your barbarians and your bards and stuff doesn't seem very tough, except when they're in their own environment, right? When that polar bear can swipe you and then grab you and drag you down into um underneath the the the, the frozen waters it, while you guys are walking along the thin ice of a frozen lake, it makes the polar bear that much more. Uh, more dangerous, you know, when the polar bear can't be seen in the blizzard and everyone's walking around half blinded and, and shivering and the polar bear is just like walking along like, doo, 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 no big deal to me. Swipe, bite, drag off into the distance, you know, drags away five feet and no one can see where they went. Uh, the blood stains start getting covered by snow and it's very hard to track them down. Then that's where the polar, ba polar bear's power really comes in. When you're in a swamp and you know that that giant um that giant um um almost dinosaur like throwback alligator grabs one of the pcs grapples them pulls them down into the the murky water and does a does the barrel spin to try to you know uh break their bones that's where the giant alligator really really starts to shine that's where they where it's like oh shoot we're we're in its territory and it has the, all the advantages literally and figuratively uh, absolutely that's where that's where those things shine and and having a chase can really impart upon your players like listen i know you know you think you know the stats of this creature but i'm telling you you're running through its lair and yeah, I'm going to segue a little bit. Um, hell, it's my it's my damn show. I'm uh, let me grab a slice of pizza. Excuse me, guys. Let me get on my high horse here. Um, using the environment as a layers, traps, um, uh, layers, traps, obstacles, hazards, um, just things that you can use, puzzles, things that you use in your world. The natural environment is a quote unquote layer action for your your creatures, right? Your natural bestial creatures the alligator that lives in a swamp the entire swamp is its lair and it should get those benefits of being in its lair now if some some kind of strange way the pcs are able to dimension door or teleport that giant alligator into the the frigid cold it's going to be completely out of its element but most of the time most natural creatures live in their own world and those things are its lair. Uh, you shouldn't have to open up a book and look for a lair action under each creature. You should be able to just pick up a book. Hmm, I've got a stack of books right here. Wait a minute. Hold it. Wait one minute. It's like, let me stop. Um, but yeah, you should be able to just say, well, that that's where they live. And yeah, your ass needs to run because you being in their natural environment makes them that much more dangerous. Um, Sure, the this the giant gorilla, the giant gorilla, um, uh, semi sentient gorillas that are in the the jungle, um, are maybe far less powerful than your PC. But when they're hanging out in the tree canopy in the in the jungle, and it's hard for you to make your way through it, and all those opportunity attacks that your character's built around, um, pretty much suck because every time you turn, you're hitting another tree or getting your arm stuck in another. Uh, 
vine and they're throwing spears down on you from above because, well, hell, they've got a climbing speed and you can barely move in the thick foliage. That means that it's their environment. That's their lair. And they're going to take advantage of it. Uh, Foolish Kiwi says, or thinking you're alone and safe in your cave until you start seeing <laughs> snow prints of humans trekking around in the snow and huddling in groups outside. Snow and sand is great for clues of environmental dangers. And can you just imagine like building the tension of, of footprints in the snow or the sand, um, the, the, what, what type of footprints there are and having those footprints go away. One of the players like, I swear I saw footprints and everyone's just like, yeah, right. Whatever. You're like, no, I swear. I mean, we're being tracked. And you're like, nah, not at all. Yeah, but till they get it until they get attacked by, you know, snow white bugbears that are like, um, and I don't know, they maybe have Yeti Yetis amongst their group and they're like cannibals or something. And literally they're hiding like 30 feet away from the player characters in the, in the blinding blizzard, but no one can see them or hear them. And the, you don't know how many are out there. And when they attack you with their nets or their spears or something and drag, you know, one PC off into the distance, you know, little by little, they, they go out of, they go out of range and out of sight and therefore you know those spells that require you to target a specific creature that you can see won't work uh i i, I i'm not going to pull out the book right now but there are many spells whether they're healing spells um you know buff spells that require you i can you know pc can target three three allies that they can see well maybe if you can't see them it doesn't work right in in your game uh I, I know it can it can be a little um, uh, it can feel like you're nerfing some of the the spellcasters, which uh, upcoming verbal components this weekend are going to like delve into that. It, it, essentially, the verbal components this weekend are going to delve into uh, shutting down spellcasters. You know, shutting down the fact that they can't see their allies, um, shutting down the fact that. Um, they might need uh, components or they're not able to verbalize because they're choking or not able to use their, so their uh, hands for somatic components because their, their hands are numb or their hand is broken or something. But going back into the chases, you know, one element of having a chase is the fact of, do you slow down for your slowest member? Do you take the time to pause long enough to save one or more of your allies who may get, you know, who fall behind. If you're in a rage, raging river and you're going down in a boat and one of your PCs gets knocked out the boat, do you try to slow your boat down and throw them a rope and try to draw, you know, drag them in? Do you let them drown? If you're running across sand dunes and somebody trips and falls down the wrong sand dune and, you, you know, do you wait? Do you go down the sand dune to try to help them up again? Uh, same thing on a rope bridge. Someone their foot goes through a rope bridge and they're hanging on by their fingertips or something. Do you, do you stop and does someone stop and, and pull them up when there are enemies on flying pterodactyl, pterodactyls throwing javelins at you? You know, what do you do? So putting those choices into the player's hands is an excellent way to create tension. And these are also these environmental chases, whether you're trying to escape a tornado or thunderstorms or blizzards or um, flash floods, as uh, Prue mentioned, like you don't even need to have someone chasing you. But having these impending dangers, the puzzle is how do you get to safety? Do you work together to get there? Is it every man for himself uh, or woman? You know, um, you don't want to leave anybody out. You know, do you do you work together? Does someone come up with a great idea? Hey, I've got this spell to lighten the burden of carrying one of our unconscious, you know, allies. And then maybe you can carry them, Mr. You know, strong barbarian person, uh, instead of trying to swing at something with their ax, you know, it, maybe someone has a defensive spell that can block the, the thrown javelins at them as they make their way across the, the rope bridge. But, uh Oh, someone's trying to light the rope bridge on fire at one end. You know, it's, it's, it's coming up with the, as mentioned by, um, by the, the guys at Absolute Tabletop, specifically Tabletop Terrors, that you want to create problems. You don't want to create solutions. Creating the problem of going from one place to another, uh, giving adequate time 
and the chances of getting those resources to go from one place to another, and then boom, just dropping the hammer and letting them figure it out. Uh, but yeah, we have many, many settings that require chases, and it could be it could be a fantasy realm that's locked in a titanic battle. There's just been it's it's 40k fantasy style, right? It's just nothing but war upon war upon war. And the PCs may have to navigate through a war that's been lasting, you know, hundreds of years, and there doesn't seem to be an end to it. And no one even remembers which side is fighting fighting for what reason. You know, it's just it's just complete chaos, and the PCs need to navigate their way through. You know, trebuchets launching, you know, chunks of castle walls while archers let loose thousands of arrows and hunting, you know, rabbit hunting dogs or hunting town down enemies while PCs are hiding in, you know, um, uh, um, I was about to say, oh, uh, yeah, pits and craters uh, created by spells that are launched from wizards in towers or something like that. I mean, there can be so many things that become hazards on their way to go from one place to another. And so absolutely we're going to we're going to go tomorrow and come up with a ton of lists that involve hazards that you encounter on your chase whether it's fantasy, whether it's modern day, whether we we go sci-fi, um maybe specific things like Dark Sun versus Mad Max. They're both extremely similar but very different what kind of hazards they can involve. Um, <laughs> Azala, what I miss? Overslept. Yeah, we're not going to rewind that. You know me. I've already gone off, got distracted, came back. <laughs> you can't do that. Um, Foolish Kiwi says, or even a chase that wasn't planned. Maybe the dice rolls just didn't work out and suddenly it's not kill the boss. It's escape, regroup, and figure out a plan. And you, you're really going to have to have to reinforce for some of those players that don't like to run. Like, yeah. R run, regroup, um, you know, uh, tactical retreat. Maybe, maybe you're going to have to do that to to get away from this, you know, the idea. I mean, dice tend to swing. The, the fewer dice you roll, the more swingy they become. And so no matter how good your character is, when, when five PCs roll, you know, six ones in a roll and a D20, yeah, things are just going to go bad. And it may be like, yeah, we need to back the hell out and and regroup and rethink this, even though we've lost surprise or tactical advantage or something like that. <laughs> if it's uh oh, <laughs> had to prepare food, you know. Um, then says I once had a campaign that was a chase all the way. They were chasing the big um, the the BBEG all over Faerun uh, or Faerun or uh, however you pronounce it. Um, yeah, the big bad evil guy all over. And, you know, sometimes that's, that is a thing, right? The, the big bad is just moving, right? They're moving their armies. They are running away. They have a plot and they need to get away from you to exercise their plot. It could be someone, there could be usurpers like, um, uh, sowing discord in a giant realm and the PCs have to chase after them to keep them from, you know, bringing the realm to war or something. Um, yeah. Foolish Kiwi says counterattack toward headquarters, the, the proud generals retreat. <laughs> yeah. Counterattack the opposite direction. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. As Allah says, a true warrior never runs. It's called a tactical repositioning to the rear. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. You could call it whatever you want. Yeah, it's running from the fight to, to regroup and do it again. Where there's nothing wrong with that. It's 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 the psychological like uh some people don't want to be seen as being like you know the coward, which it's not being cowardly, it's just it's being tactical, right? It, running is a tactical thing. I want to live, we don't have the advantage, we're gonna lose, we need to regroup and do this all over again. Um Vince says, or simply they have to get somewhere and you have to catch them before they arrive. Yeah, we and and um Vince, yeah, Monday and Tuesday, we definitely, of course, we're gonna hit hit it right now. We talked about the fact that there are um various win air quotes, win conditions for a chase, whether it is uh cutting cutting someone off, whether the enemy wants to cut you off or you cut the enemy off before they get there. Maybe it's a parallel chase where adversaries and yourself need to get somewhere first 
before someone else gets there. It could be everyone is simply outrunning some other danger, whether it's uh, bad weather is moving in of any type, whether tornadoes, hurricanes, tsunamis, sandstorms, uh, blizzards are moving in. And so everybody's trying to get to safety. And, and if you can get to safety and keep the other people out of it, out of your safe zone, that might be good. And it could also be just getting to, you know, getting through a gate before it closes, um, escaping a, uh, a bomb that's about to explode. And you want to get to the farthest radius possible away to escape the danger. Maybe a plane is about to crash and you need, or a helicopter and you need to get away from the spinning helicopter blades as fast as you can. Uh, a volcano explodes and you need to get away from, you know, the pyroclastic, you know, spilling down of the, down from the mountaintop while it's spewing hot lava chunks into the air. You need to get away from it as, as fast as possible. Um, so yeah, as Hollis says, oh, an orc never loses. If we win, we win. If we die, we die fighting. So it doesn't count. And if we run away, we can come back to give it another go. Yeah, it's always it's always that kind of thing. Just reshaping, um, whatever. If, what if if you need to to re reformulate what you think is a is a is a retreat? Fine, whatever floats your boat. Just do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, Vince says in my in my campaign, a big bad evil guy was banished to the other side of of of. Uh, Faerun by a desperate dryad that was about to get killed by him, and now she hired the PCs to catch him before he gets back. Yeah, I mean, hell, the um, much of the plot, the the meta plot of uh, Game of Thrones is about the 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 woodland folk, the green folk that lived in the the tree folk that created. Um, a ritual that turned men into basically undead, frozen warriors and their impending doom, right? In in many ways, in, in a certain way, it's kind of a chase in a sense that those who know that the impending doom is coming are running around trying to gain allies. You know, you know nothing, Jon Snow. Um, and getting allies as many as they can before... The, the danger hits, right? And what do you do before before you get wiped out? Hey, we we need to run here. We need to convince these people. We need to run there and convince these people. And and of course, in between, there's nothing but political hazards and obstacles in your way to get what you want. Which you know you could you could kind of formulate that into a into a chase. You know how fast can you get around the 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 world of Westeros? and convince them to your side before they start infighting amongst themselves. And then, you know, it's basically like herding cats. We all know that. But, you know, that that's also a possibility of having your political chases. Uh, House of Cards. Um, there, there's plenty of other uh, that I can't come up with. Uh, plenty of other political movies and television shows that use that as a trope. I need to run to the House and convince this senator. I need to... to um, uh, I'm a p police detective and I need to get to one of my contacts in the underworld and convince them to do something else. So it's basically using charisma in your chase to get allies to your side or convince people to stay out of a fight. Um, hey, you know, big bad mob guy, I need to convince you not to be involved or strike back because your your nephew Vincent and Paulie got shot or something, and I need you to stand down so I can go after uh, a rival mobster or something like that. Uh, that's also a possibility to have a political chase where you, you need to convince someone before your enemy, your adversary convinces someone or bribes them or threatens them or shows them, you know, blackmails them to get something get them to do something and you want to get there first and say, Hey, if he comes to you with a bribe, I've got, I'll double whatever they're doing. Or if he comes to you with, with uh, blackmail, I'll be sure to steal the information back with my hacker skills or something, or breaking and entering skills or something to get it back so that you won't, your political campaign won't be derailed or what have you. Um, Foolish Kiwi says a smart big bad guy has probably paid off the town guards of places you may want to go. Maybe even whomever sentences you to prison, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, as all says, in, in a continuation, we need to get the judge to sign this before that innocent guy gets it executed. So again, Here's a great way to have a chase where we get to move the spotlight, right? So 
you can have the more physical characters, the barbarians, the paladins or whatever, the fighters fighting people while the other player characters have to run somewhere to exactly get a judge to sign something to get someone innocent out of jail, to get the rogue, to pick the lock, to get um, an enemy who's been captured and handcuffed before they get executed at high noon, you know, always at high noon, right? It, um, you, you know, uh, uh, the, the big bad who keeps running ahead of the PCs to pay off the city guard, to blackmail the nobles, to arrest you when you get there and you need to, to, chase them down to harry them to try to get ahead of them because if the further away they get the more they're able to entrench themselves maybe into society and you're really trying to shut them down um vin says for those who know one piece in a, in a way this whole world is based around a chase a chase to the last island in the world where the one piece is hidden and the whole story is about who arrives first um i'm not i'm not familiar with one piece but hell the the National Treasure movies are about like American, not mythology, but like uh, conspiracy theories, and it is very much about running around trying to, trying to gather the pieces of something to to uncover a mystery. So, in a way, that is very much an investigative chase where one or multiple. Uh, elements are running around trying to trying to gather pieces together where you're playing maybe like a gumshoe or or knight's black agent kind of kind of world where you're gathering clues those clues lead you to something and you need to get those clues before the enemy gets it for example the black plague wiped out people you know many many years ago but there is evidence that um, the Black Plague still exists. And if it's released in the world, it'll kill everybody. So you need to get this evidence that the Black Plague exists somewhere, get it and destroy it before an, a nihilistic enemy wants to release the Black Plague on the world yet one more time. You know, um, there's a, uh, what was the, the, the television show? Um, not the event. Um, Salvation was about the earth about to be hit being hit by a meteor and that meteor was going to come and it was, you know, the size of an, of a small nation. It was going to hit the planet and wipe out life. And so the whole show was about running around, creating plans to, to divert this asteroid that's going to hit the earth while everyone else is playing political game games to not only survive the apocalypse, but, sur but come out on top. If you survived the apocalypse, um, yeah, uh, uh, Vincent says the world is basically water world with just a couple of islands floating around and at the equator are two lines of mountains and the sea between them is the great L grand line which goes around the planet completely with different islands all the way and the last island has a great treasure hidden which lets you become the king of pirates if you arrive first. Yeah, we, we, we can go back to what um, Prue mentioned about pirates and piracy just sailing on any kind of vessel whether it's a floating ship like an airship or sailing on the high seas or being on um well there's a television show called the last ship where life got wiped out by um by a virus and this was a ship that was up in the arctic circle that wasn't hit by the virus and they're sur surviving and so it's all about sailing on the high seas and being pirates and attacking other ships and running away from ships and being um if you want to do a like caribbean pirate style game with black like the television show black flag where uh privateers from england are attacking the pirates because the pirates are going after of course all of their goods and services that they they acquired by um by having um as the settlers of Catan would say uh or no what is it rio little brown people working quote unquote working for you working fields and things like that um for for sugar cane and and digging in salt mines and things like that and so the pcs may be running back and forth maybe they're working to free slaves that are you know working in the caribbean maybe they are of uh, truly criminal and they're attacking british and spanish ships full with gold bullion or whatever and they need to run away from 
from people, or maybe they're working for the the uh, any of the European side going after the pirates that are are dismantling um, the 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 good and uh, just world of uh, of whichever European country you're working for. Um, oh, Scott Post says chase and being chased. Uh, PCs are chasing someone or racing someone while guards, uh, the guards, or monsters or lava flow are close behind. Yeah. Um, or apex monsters. I said, Alex, apex monsters are behind. Yeah, absolutely. What hell? Um, y you know, the, the idea of dinosaurs running rampant, chasing you while you're chasing someone else or someone releases, um, an apex monster, like, you know, like the Tarask, like a Godzilla monster, or uh, opens up a portal that releases hordes of monsters. And so you're chasing the cultists that released the monsters while the monsters are chasing you. And so you can have a like, we're both predator and prey kind of thing going on. And maybe you're able to finagle a way to have the hordes of monster or the apex predator go after your enemies without you being targeted, right? It's it's I'm going to shoot the enemy enemy in the ankle, have them fall. You run past them. The apex predator gobbles down your enemy, and you're like, okay, great. I don't need to be I don't need to be the fastest. I just need to be faster than you, <laughs> right? Uh, Vince says you could also have a very deep dungeon similar to Maiden Maiden the Abyss, and the treasures simply get more valuable the further down you got, and somehow you have to arrive first at the very bottom. Yeah, the 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 rival adventuring party is a great idea too, where there's a rival adventuring party going through uh, the adventure and they are falling into and maybe tripping some traps or they're waiting for you to trip traps. And then they come behind you and like take the glory and they, they push other enemies down deep in the dungeon towards you to, to make a barrier between you and them. Uh, Foolish Cutie says Kaiju settings. Oh my God, I can't believe I didn't think of that one earlier. I love Kaiju, yeah. Kai mechas versus monsters, Kaiju versus um, Jaegers. Yeah, that, that, that's a big chase scene too. You know, the, 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 there's always the Kaiju about to crush a city and you need to run and defend the city before the giant sized Kaiju get there. And so you're piloting your giant robots and it and maybe there's a bigger plot, right? The the movie wasn't the best, but the latest, um, the the latest uh, Jaeger versus Kaiju movie. Come on, someone tell me the name of the movie. Um, there was a plot where you know there was a rival company that was using um, teleoperated mechanized uh, robots instead of ones piloted by actual human Pacific Rim too. Thank you very much. And so they they tried to throw in this larger world building with these giant robots and these giant monsters and it could be maybe you're fighting a um a corporation that's trying to get a better corporate deal to build giant robots and so now you're fighting gi other giant robots while the kaiju are about to attack and and you need to work with them but then they're trying to backstab you and stuff um vince says is there an rpg where you play kaiju yes um g give me a moment i'm going to bend my head down i'm okay i'm back here i am this is one version of it. Um, okay. This is called Tiny Frontiers and based off of uh, the Tiny Dungeon. This is a version of Tiny Dungeon, I mean Tiny Frontiers, called uh, Mechas and Monsters. And it comes, it, it, uh, it comes with a little uh, GM screen, tiny, of course, <laughs> and um, and the, D the DM screen has it. Oh, there's a blinded. The DM screen has a ton of like randomized things, like in in giant in cities where there's like gas stations and uh, and, and all that kind of stuff. But yes, the the rules allow you to play kaiju, uh, and it allows you to play mechas as well. Uh, and it runs on the the tiny dungeon system, which is a two D six. And five and six means you're successful. And that's the rule. That's, there's no stats. There's no, I mean, the, the, the it's a great game. I, so it's made by Gallant Games. Um, and they, they make, they have Tiny Frontiers, which is a sci-fi setting. They have Tiny 
the the mechas and monsters which runs off of the tiny frontier system and then they have tiny dungeon which is their medieval version and it's it's a super rules like super rules light -like system um yeah very much so um, um and there's plenty of other games there's uh mechton written by uh mike pondsmith that did the original uh, cyberpunk um Bam, the original Cyberpunk. He has one called Mechton and Mechton Prime, Mechton Alpha, um, where you 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 build um, but yeah, Mike Pondsmith wrote wrote uh, this one, the original Cyberpunk, and he's got one called Mechton as well. Um, hell, there's also um shit, Battletech and a ton of other games if you want to get really, really crunchy. Uh Alzal says, I know there's an RPG mech where you fight them. Yeah. Uh, a Foolish Kiwi says, I like Kaiju even more in fantasy setting. F fantasy settings. Rows of wizards fleeing fireballs and attempting to summon storms, bringing um, out all the siege equipment, ironically, to defend from being sieged. Hell yeah. That's what originally I believe the idea of the Tarrasque, that's where that came from. Um, I'm not really a big fan of the Tarrasque as it's built. But I like the idea of the Tarrasque, where you could have one or more of these giant kaiju-sized creatures stomping their way around the system. And I, I got to bring this up because I thought of this, and this is a great opportunity to bring this up. One of you guys, um, and I, I apologize because I don't remember it. One of you guys brought up a house rule because we were talking about... Um, about creating our own rule systems, right? And we were talking about uh, using using mechanics and our favorite mechanics and our favorite games. One of you guys came up with a, uh, a mechanic which modulates the dice up and down. Please, one of you guys, remind me. Modulates the dice up and down based on the size of the creature you're fighting. Let me give you an example. Someone has a long sword in Dungeons and Dragons. It does a die eight damage. For each level of size category above a medium-sized creature, because the human has the long sword, it does a D8. If they fight a large creature, it does a die six. If they fight a huge creature, it would do a die four. And if they tried to fight, swing at a gargantuan creature, it would do a die three or maybe no damage at all. Probably a die three. So anyway, it would modulate it up and down. And I could imagine wizards fighting kaiju and using that house rule where i'm gonna fire a fireball at this giant sized creature and you're like sure against humans you're rolling a ton of d6s but against that giant creature you're you're doing let's see uh, three size categories above so it'd be it would be d4 d3 one point of damage so if let's say you're rolling eight d6 you're doing just eight points of damage maybe i'm making I'm using that house rule, making it up, but my point could be that if you use that house rule, house rule, it means that the PCs will absolutely positively have to come up with better ways of fighting these giant sized creatures. The typical hack and slash is not gonna work. Sure, your barbarian can kill normal humans. And yes, you're probably really good at killing ogres and hill giants, but when it starts getting 500 feet tall, that no matter how good you are with your your magic battle axe, you're really only scrape, scraping the surface. We're going to have to come up with another way of fighting these things or gathering an army or something like that. Um, uh, oh, uh, Azala says, remember, um, Gallant Games also bought Atomic Highway. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. The, um, uh, Gallant Knight Games. We're dropping crap all over here. I'm going to get digital pizza everywhere. Uh, yeah, they don't have the, the website here. Um, yeah, Gallant Knight, uh, Gallant Knight Games owns a number of um, a number of IP, and that's one of them. So I'll probably pick up Atomic Highway just because of that. Foolish Kiwi says, uh, the Tarrasque is too cliche and specific for me, but I do love having giant sea monsters that roam up onto land, etc. Um, how about the threat of the giant kraken, right? The the giant kraken wraps his tentacles around the the, the sailing ship, you know, the ship that's about to uh, make port or something, and you've got to fight it off. And your your little arrows and and swords don't do much to it, so you have to come up with some other way to escape it, to to sail, to to finally, you, you know, um, 
get to, into the winds that are going to pull you away from the Kraken as it tries to hit you. Uh, 3.5 has a thing like that where bigger stuff is easier to hit, but smaller weapons deal less damage. The Great Axe for the Gnome deals D10 or whatever, but for the Giant, it's like 3D6. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Scapo says, gun swords? No. No, y'all need an oxygen bomb, a 10th level spell. <laughs> yeah. 11th level black hole spell. 12th level um, dis disintegrate reality spell. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and like in, okay, um, like Foolish Kiwi is mentioning, it, based on the size of the size of the individual wielding that weapon may be different, right? Like a gnome's battle axe size is different than a giant's battle axe size, right? So a giant wielding its battle axe probably do 3d6 the, the, one handed, whereas a normal human might not even be able to pick it up. Or if they could pick it up, it's more like lifting a log rather than wielding a two handed battle axe. Um, so, and also whoever wields it is probably going to do less damage too, because, you know, a giant, a fire giant with a battle axe is going to wield it one handed and chop through trees easily. Whereas even the barbarian with the, you know, the giant 18, uh, classic 18, zero, zero strength, second edition, um, giant strength or even 20 strength is using it two handed and maybe doing like one D 12 damage with it or something like that. So th that's also a possibility. And if you use that house rule in your game, that can ramp up the reason for having chases. You know, there's a reason to run away from the giants because they, my attacks against the giants are less. Now, we all know that armor class is not about hit, hitting or missing. It's about effectiveness. So that's basically it. Uh, Azala says, jump to Deadlands, Hell on Earth, um, plane of being, learn <laughs> learn the nuke spell and come back. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, guys, we've we've hit the, the hour mark. We just want to talk about chases. We're, we're doing that all week. Um, chases in chase scenes in our favorite settings and using chases in your setting to kind of round out your setting, the hazards in it, the things you come across, um, allies. We, we're deep diving. Of course, tomorrow is a Third Pillar Thursday, and then we have um, Future Friday. So, um, guys, I'm going to cut it here. Babe, have a good one. You Love, you. Love you. Bye. So, um, yeah, so we're, we're going to cut it here. I got to get ready for work. Um, uh, Foolish Kiwi says, uh, I play a half giant, and he hits like a truck, but I'll be damned um, if an archer has ever missed me. <laughs> Exactly. Right. And, and well, armor, armor class is not about missing. It, armor class has always been about effectiveness. A person in plate mail and a shield with a 19 armor class and versus a character, a monk with a 19 armor class is only hit by weapons. Their effectiveness is different. You know, the monk is parrying and describing how they're dodging weapons or grabbing the weapon with their, you know, the blade with the palms of their hands, whereas the paladin has the, is holding up the shield and they're deflecting the arrows and the long sword just bangs off the helmet. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, Poo Poo says, have a nice day, everyone. Role play it out. Yeah, when in doubt, role play it out. Yeah, that's that's my t-shirt. You know, when in doubt, role play it out. Um, uh, Azal says, actually, that'd be an interesting thing, having a jump between worlds to find a powerful enough weapon to stop the giant monster. So, guys, have a good one. Um, yeah, I, I do go an hour, but I, I uh, over an hour, ten, 10 to, but I've really got to cut it. <laughs> uh, I, I do have to get ready. Um, my Pop-Tart, I think, is probably half eaten by my kitty, uh, or at least the sprinkles have been taken off of it. But, um, <laughs> yeah, um, you guys have fun. Um, continue to talk in the, in the in the Discord if you wish. Uh, I would suggest that. And anyone who's new to the channel, uh, please look down below um, into the doobly doo and uh, you know just you know patronize the hell out of me. <laughs> uh, see what I'm about. See what we're all about. And uh, later on, uh, share in a slice of digital pizza. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good day.